Hi, my name is Kamala Downs, and this is an interview for Courtney McMasters in regards to chromosome 18 abnormalities. Courtney asked myself and Thomas and Lillian to participate in a research project she's doing for school on how chromosome 18, and I, excuse me, a chromosome ab 18 abnormality has affected our family. Now, Courtney is sibling to uh, an individual who has a chromosome 18 abnormality, and we're happy to help her on this project. I've already posted Lillian's interview and her answering some questions, and Thomas's interview as a sibling and him answering questions. Now it's my turn, and I'm going to interview myself, so this ought to be fun. <laughs> I'm going to ask myself my own questions. When did your child get diagnosed with a chromosome 18 abnormality? Lillian got diagnosed at three years old. It was in December of 2004. When did you realize things weren't developing normally and how did you know? Lillian was delayed in several areas. She was delayed with her speaking. She was not doing the, the milestones like at this point they'll have two or three words and then building from that. She was delayed in her motor skills and sitting up. She actually never crawled she scooted on her bottom and I hear from many of our fellow chromosome 18 family as we like to call ourselves that there are many of them who just skipped crawling and never did it and scooted around on their bottoms so we call them bottom scooters will ever be able to live on their own I'm going to say yes to that because that's just my nature have you thought about the future for your child I often think about the future for Lillian and the way that I do that is I just try and be aware of what her likes and interests are and what she wants to try so that I can just be aware of those things and what her strengths are and her weaknesses to help her explore certain areas and help her determine what it is that she wants to do in her future with herself and what her purpose is and how she will use that to uh, help society and benefit society. She already knows that she wants to be a helper as she calls it and uh, right now and for a while it's been a fairy and a fairy helper and I tell her you can absolutely be a, help a fairy it doesn't matter what you call yourself you can be a fairy and you can be a fairy helper. Have you thought about the future for your child? And I just answered that. <laughs> How has having a special needs child affected your lifestyle? This one is a big one for me because it has affected my lifestyle with a, probably a 100% turn. I used to think of myself as a person who didn't hold judgments and a person who had compassion, but now I know differently. I was very judgmental before these two came into my life, and I do put them to get together when I talk about this, Thomas and Lillian, because Thomas, although he's not diagnosed with anything, and that's only because I haven't taken him in to be diagnosed, he has his own issues, and anyone who follows me knows that uh, what those are. But it, it's affected my, my judgment. I have released so much judgment and I find every day that I am able to release more judgment against other people or events or situations and it's not solely about people who have disabilities it's anyone um, I anymore I don't care what you look like what you sound like what you smell like how much money you make where you live and what kind of car you drive I simply have released these things and I have compassion a true authentic compassion that I never would have thought possible for me and the last thing is that I have a um, I guess I'll use the word conform I do not live my life in a conforming way anymore and I don't know that I mean that in the way that it sounds I just am able to freely express myself and what I think and what I feel it is my purpose to say and do without any worry or care about what anyone else thinks about it. What obstacles do you have to overcome having an affected child? Well, if you know me, I don't like to see and I don't choose to see anything as an obstacle. 
I would say that there are times when I am choosing to have negative thoughts about a situation with Thomas and Lillian, and for the most part, I can get through those just by retracking or shifting my thoughts to more positive thoughts, frankly, and releasing the negative thoughts. Now, there are times, though, when I have problems doing that, and I just cannot seem to get out of a negative thought funk. And what I'll do in those times is I will reach out to a dear friend and say, hey, help me out here. I need to hear some of my own advice. I'm having problems getting out of this negative dip that I'm in. Why did you decide to have another child after knowing you had an affected child? Well, this was a decision that just had been made, I think, possibly before Lillian was even born, that there would be two children. So we did continue on that path, although I did have a, a period where I was wavering on whether or not that was the good and right choice for us. And we eventually decided that it was, and that was the path we were going to continue to take. Last question, do you think your child understands that she has special needs or that she has a disability? Absolutely, Lillian does understand this. It um, is something that she knows and has been told all along. That's my philosophy uh, to share with her and the way that I've dealt with this all along. Chromosome 18, chromosome 18 abnormalities, genetic abnormalities, special needs, these are all household terms in our house. Both Thomas and Lillian are aware of those terms and what they mean. I have told her since she knew what I was talking about that she is special and different and unique and that she is to use this to her advantage in life and to never use it as an excuse for not doing something that she wants to do. Thank you so much Courtney for asking us to participate in this and I am grateful that this that I was able to line this up on World, World Rare Disease Awareness Day. I didn't intend for that to happen, but it did. And I know you can't see it, but I have on my Chromosome 18 t-shirt and my Chromosome 18 pin. It's covered up by my hair and my different is good necklace. So and all in support of World Rare Disease Day, Disease Day and my Chromosome 18 family. Thanks.